This is part 11 of our series on how to use Ultimaker Cura for complete beginners. In this video we will learn about using tree supports as well as briefly go over the support placement feature. We're going to get started with the chin set up the same way we set it up in part 10. If you missed that setup, go back and watch that video first. But the first thing I want to do is make sure that support structure is turned on. If it's not turned on, I can go up to support and click on these three lines. And this window will pop up and under support you should see an option to select support structure. If you can't find it, you should be able to just type it in in the search bar and it should be one of the options available to you under support. But once you make sure it's turned on, you can then change the settings to tree support. And I'm going to leave everything else the way I've had it from the last video with 10% infill and a 2 millimeter raft and I'm going to hit slice. Now normally I do a jump cut here during the slice. Um, so you don't have to sit and watch this little loading bar go. But actually for this very first one in this video, I'm going to let it run because I want to emphasize that this is actually one of the downsides to using tree supports is it is a slower slice. There are obviously upsides to using tree supports as well, but this is obviously a downside. You can see that it's still going, but it is almost done. Okay, now that it's done, we can go into one of the other downsides if I go to preview. One of the other downsides to tree supports is it doesn't actually work correctly on every printer. You can see that it's not actually supporting everything that we wanted it to support here on the bottom. And the same thing actually is happening up here at the top. It's not supporting this entire lip here. And so at first glance, you might think tree supports aren't any good. I'm going to go ahead and go back to prepare and Let's change our printer to our FL Sun Super Racer. Now, this is a printer that I personally own. You can add more printers by clicking Add Printer if you want to play along with me. Go to Non Ultimaker and go to Add a Non Networked and scroll down to FL Sun and select the Super Racer. I'm going to go ahead and switch it because I already have this set up. Now, you'll notice that the settings will automatically change if you change your printer. I'm going to make sure that I have all my settings the way I want them. I do want a bigger raft on these faster printers. I do find that it causes problems with it being a faster printer. If I scroll up, you'll see that the standard setting for this is 150 millimeters per second. That's why they call it the Super Racer. It's just a faster printer. I'm going to keep the infill at 10%, and I do want to keep tree supports on, and I'm going to go ahead and hit slice. If we go to preview now, you can kind of see the advantages to a tree support. You can see hopefully why they call it a tree support and how it actually gets underneath everything as it branches out both here at the top and here at the bottom. Um, why doesn't it work on every printer? I am not quite sure. I've just learned that certain printers don't do too well with the tree supports and certain ones do. And so let's go into what the advantages to a tree support are. First off, you can see that it is very, very thin. It's very hollow and empty on the inside. And as we come up, you can see it branch out. I'm going to go ahead and close this out. And so one starting support can actually branch out to multiple places, and you don't need to have a support going up and down at every single point. You can just have one branch branch out into multiple places and hold up multiple parts of your print, all stemming from one place. But you can also imagine that theoretically you're also using a lot less material to do this, and we can demonstrate that. What does this say? It says it's going to be a 10-hour print on my FL Sun SR using only 175 grams. If we go back to prepare and we change this to a normal support, and we hit slice, you can see the difference here if I go to preview. It is now a 12 hour and 53 minutes, so almost a 13 hour print, and it's using a bit more filament. Now it's up to 203 grams. And so hopefully you can see the advantage to using tree supports is it's usually just less material and less print time in general. Let's go ahead and switch gears here. I want to look at the top of the helmet next. 
And so looking at the top of the helmet, I want to turn on another feature if you don't already have it turned on. So under support, I'm going to click on these three lines. And I want to find the option that says support placement. And again, if you can't find it, you can just type it in. And what does support placement do? Well, support placement gives me an option to turn on supports everywhere versus only supports that will be touching the build plate. And so you'll see like all of these supports have nothing underneath them except the build plate. So it'll go straight down to the build plate. But you'll notice that in the circles here, directly underneath them is actually the bottom of these circles. And so look what happens if I turn on touching build plate with no support blockers and hit slice. And if we go to preview, you'll see that even though I didn't have any support blockers for these circles, because they would have had to build off of the print itself instead of the build plate, those supports are automatically blocked. And so any supports that can't come off of the build plate are automatically turned off, which is kind of a cool setting to have on. Sometimes very useful, although on certain printers, I do find that the software kind of glitches out and the supports try to start at the build plate and go through the print. Um, it just it ends up looking really weird and it doesn't always block. So in those cases, support blockers are still your best friend. Just a cool feature that I wanted to briefly mention. Let's go ahead and turn on tree supports and hit slice. And you'll notice once again with the Elegoo Neptune 3 series printers, for whatever reason, Ultimaker Cura doesn't quite allow the tree supports to go everywhere. They're really needed. I could not tell you why. Hopefully in future updates and iterations in Cura, this problem will resolve itself. Let's go ahead and once again change this to the FL Sun Super Racer printer and make sure my settings are set up the way I like them with the tree supports and the rafts. Um, this print speed goes up obviously, but the infill density is still 10. I'm gonna go ahead and hit slice. And if we go to preview, you'll notice that even though we still had touching build plate on, that didn't really matter because the tree supports kind of go around and then branch off to fill in that gap. And so it still goes into these circles. So touching build plate isn't always as helpful for tree supports as it is for standard supports. Let's go ahead and go back to prepare. And let's block all these circles real quick. And let's re-slice. And now let's look at it. And you can see this is a lot better. Uh, it dropped down to 318 grams, a little bit under 18 hours of a print. And so if we check the layers, you can see as it comes up, these tree supports are very, very thin, which do make them break off a lot easier than standard supports. Um, but if we were to change this to a normal support, we can see the difference. You can see now the print is a little over 18 hours and we're up to 335 grams of filament. And so once again, you can see the slight advantage to using tree supports. Let's look at this one more time with the mask. And you can see it's set up the same way we did it in part four of our series. If we set up the tree support on Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro and we click preview, you will see that we have a similar problem where it's not blocking everything that you'd want it to block on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. Once again, I'm not really sure why. If I set it up on my Ender 3 S1, for example, and slice it with tree supports and click preview, you can see that it obviously does a much better job supporting everything that you would want it to support. Um, you can see that this is a 110 gram print with an almost 17 hour print time. If we change this to normal supports, we can see the difference. And you can see now it is almost 19 hours and 122 grams of filament. And then obviously the supports are going to be a little bit harder to break off than the tree supports would be. Um, one last thing that I would like to show you before I wrap up this video, if we go back to our chin here, you can see that I'm setting up a print with more than one part on the printer. I actually did a lot of this when I was printing out helmets for each of my 50-something juniors and seniors. You can imagine that it was helpful to print more than one part at a time when essentially mass-producing these helmets. Now, 
Depending on timing and how fast my printers are, I might have set up two chins like you see here, or I might have done three masks or a chin and a mask on one print bed. But to get to the point, if we slice something with more than one part on a bed with tree supports on, you can see how one tree support branches out to both parts. This was just something that I thought was really cool about tree supports. That is, if you are strategic about part placement, you can actually have one support branch out and support multiple things. This can help with timing and saving on filament. Admittedly, maybe not enough for you to concern yourself with, but when I was essentially in manufacturing mode, printing a lot of helmets, I found this helpful and wanted to share. But with that, what are the pros and cons to tree supports? The cons is it doesn't always work on every printer and it might take a long time to slice. Whereas the pros are it's usually less material, but not always, I found out. It will take less time to print usually, and the supports are easier to break off. If you'd like to read more about it, if you hover over support structure, it will actually give you the pros and cons to both normal supports and tree supports, and sort of the ins and outs of how they work. And keep that in mind for anything that we cover in this video or any of these options in general. If you'd like to know more about it, just hover over that option, and it will explain how it works and give you pros and cons if you have options there.